First, the solar system. The solar system is our sun and the planets that go round it. Watch the next clip and be sure you know the names of the planets and their order from the sun. What we call our solar system is a family of nine planets moving around the sun. Their predictable paths are called orbits. Closest to the sun is the planet Mercury. Next comes Venus. And then our own planet, Earth. Still moving away from the sun, our other neighbour is Mars, the red planet. Next comes the asteroid belt, a zone made up of hundreds of thousands of bits of rock of all sizes. What do we know about those planets? Well, Mercury is very similar to our moon. It's closer to the sun and it's larger, but when you think of the moon, then you're really thinking of Mercury. Venus is very similar to the Earth in size. It too is closer to the sun and that makes it warmer. But Venus has a very thick atmosphere and that's important because the atmosphere traps the sun's heat. It's what we call the greenhouse effect and on Venus the greenhouse effect has run away, it's out of control and it's made the planet so hot that lead would melt on the surface. So if astronauts ever go to Venus they're going to have a very tough time surviving that environment. And then beyond the Earth we have Mars and Mars is a junior version of the Earth. It's a vast, rocky plain with some canyons and volcanoes, so it would look more or less familiar like, a, like the high desert. But the main difference for our purposes is that it has a very thin atmosphere, almost no atmosphere at all. So if astronauts were to visit Mars, which I presume they will someday, they'll have to take spacesuits. It'll be very similar to living and working on our moon. And beyond the planet Mars is the asteroid belt and then the outer planets. What are these outer planets? The first is Jupiter, orbiting 780 million kilometers away from the Sun. Then comes Saturn, double that distance away. Next is Uranus, then Neptune, and finally Pluto with its strange orbit. All of these outer planets were thought to be very similar, but they're so far away, they're very difficult to see with ground-based telescopes. That's where Voyager came in. Voyager is a NASA space probe that was launched in 1977 and is still exploring the solar system. This is a life-size model of Voyager, so you can see all the relevant parts. And these are the cameras that it uses to take images of the planets. Other experiments too, down this science boom are detectors of plasma and cosmic rays. This huge dish is what it uses to receive signals from the Earth and transmit other signals back to Earth. Voyager was designed to look at the outer planets. These are four giant planets, a hundred of times larger than Earth, are very different. They are very cold, icy, they are gaseous, they have rings around them, they have lots of moons around them. So Voyager was sent to look at this set of planets which from far away bear a very strong family resemblance. And we got closer to them, we found out that they are individuals with their own personalities. How do you send a spacecraft billions of kilometres away from the Earth without any refuelling and at a speed fast enough for it to arrive in our lifetime? Something more than just rocket propulsion was needed. We have learned that if you uh, come close enough to a planet without crashing into it, you gain some of its energy. Uh, this is similar to someone uh, on a carousel holding his hand out. If a passerby is running, you grab the hand of that person for a few seconds and then let go. When you let go, you have more energy, have more speed. We've learned that if we come close enough to those planets at a given angle, at a given direction, when we leave after the flyby, we can leave with a higher speed and in a direction we choose. This is how we guide it. Voyager, you know, with a very small amount of energy through the four planets. We used what we call the gravity assist. NASA launched two voyages on what became known as the Grand Tour. The trajectory would take them first to Jupiter, then onwards to Saturn, where Voyager 1 would head upwards out of the solar system, leaving Voyager 2 headed on to Uranus and Neptune. Over the years, the Voyagers have sent back some amazing pictures of the outer planets. Jupiter with its stormy, swirling atmosphere. Saturn with its giant rings.
and Uranus, surrounded by clouds of methane. So, in order from the Sun, the planets in our solar system are the inner planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Then there's the asteroid belt, and after that are the outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Here's an easy way to remember the order of the planets. Their first letters are the same as. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. That's the end of the section on the solar system. Next, we'll look at gravitational forces. A force of gravity exists between all masses. The larger the masses, the bigger the force of gravity between them. The closer the masses, the bigger the force of gravity between them. But the gravitational forces between normal objects around us are very small. The gravitational force we're most aware of is caused by the Earth, the largest mass we're close to. The gravitational force that pulls us towards the centre of the Earth is called our weight. The force of gravity on a 1 kilogram mass is around 10 newtons. So if your weight is 55 kilograms, then the force of gravity on you is 550 newtons. But that's only on the Earth. This next clip explains what would happen if we visited other planets. My mass of 55 kilograms always means a force of gravity of 550 newtons. To find somewhere where my weight really does change, I'm going to have to travel a little bit further. My first stop on this long journey is the planet Jupiter, an enormous gassy planet. I couldn't really land on Jupiter, but imagine I could. Now, here on Jupiter, my mass is just the same as back on Earth, 55 kilograms. In space, on Earth, on Jupiter, there's still the same amount of stuff in me. So why do I feel so heavy? Jupiter is much bigger and heavier than Earth. It has a force of gravity too, but the force of gravity is much stronger than on Earth. On Jupiter, my weight is no longer 550 newtons. It's nearly 1,400 newtons. Wow, that's heavy. Pluto's even smaller than our moon. My mass is still the same, 55 kilograms. But my weight is only 20 newtons. I weigh the same as a couple of boxes of cornflakes way back on Earth. On Pluto, the force of gravity is much, much weaker than on Earth. As well as holding us down onto the Earth, gravity also holds all the planets in their different orbits around the Sun. The size of the force of gravity between the Sun and the planet depends on the mass of the planet and its distance from the Sun. The further a planet is from the Sun, the weaker the gravitational pull from the Sun. There's a force of gravity between the Earth and the Moon that holds the Moon in its orbit around the Earth. Gravity also holds the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. There's more about the Earth and beyond in the Higher Tier Science Programme. That's the end of the section on the Earth and Beyond.